It's the story that made headlines all over the world and had every parent feeling faint. That 14-year-old girl, you know this story, rented a multi-million dollar home in West Vancouver using her parents' credit cards through a party. Hundreds of teens showed up and now the house is destroyed. The parents are on the hook. The house had been listed on a short-term rental website. Now, I know this is an extreme example, but we wanted to look at some of the rules around platforms like these and what you need to know if you're listing your home. Here to help us is real estate lawyer Mark Wiseletter. Good to have you with us this morning. Good morning. So, yes, that is an extreme example, but uh, it got us thinking about what the rules around rentals are. So I want to start with what should somebody consider if they do want to rent their house on a website like Airbnb and HomeAway? The secret of every successful business is you want to give a great customer experience to generate referrals. And that is so true on Airbnb. If you're a host, mm -hmm. you want to give your guests a great experience so they will write positive reviews about you. The more positive reviews, the higher up you go, more people will come and stay at your house. Similarly, if you're a guest, you want to have positive reviews about yourself, that you look after someone's property. So just the same way a landlord checks out a tenant in advance, you have to check out your guests so that this disaster does not occur. So you're going to want to check their profile, make sure it's complete, get a picture, see what other people are saying about them, mm -hmm. check them on social media. Are they on Facebook? Are they on LinkedIn? Do what you can to protect yourself in advance so this kind of disaster doesn't happen. Okay, let's talk about people living in a building, for example. What if you live in a building and you don't want other people to rent out their places and their units on websites like these? In most condominium buildings, you have to understand they're like their own separate government. They have their own rules. Mm -hmm. So even if a city says we're going to allow Airbnb, and they are allowing them in municipalities all around the country, if the condominium says no, mm -hmm. then it's no. And it doesn't matter what the city rules say. So you've got to make sure that your board of directors is enforcing the rules. But also, the members should take matters into their own hands. Get the concierge involved. Make life difficult for anybody who's coming in on Airbnb if you don't want them there. Because then, if you make their life miserable. They're going to post <laughs> reviews and say, don't go into this building. It's not welcome for Airbnb guests. So use the internet to protect your building huh. if you really don't want people you don't in want there. People, even though the building says it's okay and you, well, that's the, a difference. That's right? a different story. I, I, when the building says it's not okay, yeah. then I think the members need to enforce those right. rules. But everybody has to participate. But if they do say it's okay, then that's a whole other ball game. Right. It's just kind of out of luck. You got to know what you're getting yourself into, I guess, when you get into one of these buildings. Well, that's, that's important you say that because a condo is like a democracy. Mm -hmm. Some buildings have changed. They didn't allow Airbnb, but then they uh, said, you know what, maybe we should allow it under certain circumstances. The people who want to rent out, they have to pay a fee, an extra fee. Then everybody has to register with the concierge, and we're going to manage this in a controlled way. And so if it's managed in a controlled way, then the guests, the owners are not feeling as nervous about security or other uh, issues like that. Okay, so I've heard stories of people who are not owners. They are renting a unit, and then they post that rental unit online to rent out themselves. What are the rules around that? It's interesting because that happens a lot. Mm -hmm. Most residential laws across Canada say that you can't sublet your unit for more money than you're paying the landlord in rent. And you have to imagine that most people who rent their units on a daily basis on Airbnb, they're making more money than they're paying the landlord in rent. So technically, that's probably an illegal sublet and is grounds for evictions Sounds in most like, provinces. Because I'm guessing a lot of these people wouldn't tell their landlord that they're renting their place out, right? For a one night, two night special kind of thing. Well, they're having this creative discussion. We have friends from all over the world who mm. come and visit us. You know, as, but again, as long as these guests are not damaging the place, and are quiet, most landlords may not raise a fuss. It's such a tricky thing, right? I mean, we're sort of trying to keep up with the legalities of all of this. So we'll be watching this closely. We appreciate your insight this morning, Mark. Thanks for being here. Thank you.